As an introduction to the Spec Extreme Hem welder, I'd like to begin by showing you around the unit and some special features of this particular hot wedge welding machine. First off, from what's considered the front of the machine, I'd like to first mention about the handle at the bottom here that makes for easy pickup of the machine and moving to different areas where you'll perform your welding or if lifting in a storage type of situation. The area you see here is the hem guide. This guide is the complete length of the machine and it allows you to make the three different type of hem finish styles from this one particular guide. Lastly on the front you'll notice this knob here which is used as an increase or a decrease of the pressure of the pinch rollers in the front where the welding, or excuse me, in the rear where the welding takes place. Along this side of the machine, I'd like to point out the roller bearings which provide a smooth movement of the machine in a track or rail system. These particular bearings will give the machine a riding and smoothness so that the machine in a self-propelled position does not need any type of steering by the operator. In addition on this side you'll notice again the area of the guide system for forming the hem welds here near the welding area. The welding area includes the two pinch rollers as well as the spec hem wedge which you see here. We offer two wedges for the hem machine, there is the specific spec hem wedge, this particular wedge cut to the 1 inch 25 millimeter size. Various sizes are available from half inch 12 millimeter up to 2 inch 51 millimeter. In addition, the wiring here that you see plus the connection to the motor box is for the hot wedge. This can easily be spun off and removed when you want to change various weld widths or if you need to replace the hot wedge itself. This is the arm portion here which is controlled by the lever arm up here, the pinch roller engagement lever. When in an open position it allows you to manipulate and position your material correctly at the welding area but when closed secures the material in position to begin welding. From the rear of the machine, I'd like to first point out again the handle with which a grabbing a hold allows an easy movement of the machine to different areas of the shop or to different welding positions that you want to work with. In addition to that, you'll notice the drive wheel here. This particular drive wheel, in the position shown this way, allows the machine to be stationary for small pieces to filter through for welding. But when the drive wheel is pushed out and down and across attaches to the lower pressure roller, now the machine becomes a self-propelled machine and when welding the machine will move. Again, the, weld, the drive roller down underneath in this position will again cause the automatic welding and the movement of the machine whereas in this position allows for either stationary welding or an easy transport of the machine to and from the beginning or the ending of welding. On this side of the machine I'd like to first point out this knob and when unscrewed allows for a quick service of the hot wedge. The servicing can be for the cleaning after welding or even the changing of the wedge which you notice the two screws here that hold the wedge onto the arm. There's also this gate piece here which again when the wedge in the stowed position will cause a barrier here preventing any uh, personal damage with the hot wedge uh, and any subsequent touching of this area. We also have the lever arm here, which is the wedge engagement arm. The wedge, of course, stowed in this position, but when welding, the lever arm is turned in and the wedge engages for welding. When completed welding, the wedge is pulled out. 
Finally, the pinch roller lever arm here to either open or close the pinch rollers. And along with that, a marking here allowing you to identify the type of pressure you have on that pinch roller from a minimum to a maximum. That pinch roller pressure is of course controlled by the knob that was mentioned earlier. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. From the upper portion of the spec overlap hem welder, I'd like to explain some of the switches and other information as well as information back here which you will notice from the top side. First off, the unit is powered by either a 120 or 230 volt power supply. The cord with 120 has a plug on the end of it for you to insert into a household circuit, whereas the 230 volt is unprepared with a plug for you to insert the proper plug of your currency. For the switches, the first switch we have here is the on-off switch. When switched on, the green power light will come on indicating power to the unit as well as the watt low temperature controller will come on. The switches here are in idea of the direction of movement of the machine, whether it be in a forward, a neutral, or a reverse position. In the forward position, it means when the welding takes place, the machine will move in this direction. When in the neutral position, there is no movement of the rollers at all. And when set in the reverse direction, the machine will drive in this backwards direction. In addition to the switches that you have here for direction, you also have a switch here for either the manual movement of the rollers or an automatic movement. When in the manual movement, the rollers will automatically turn. But when placed in an automatic mode, the rollers will only turn when the wedge is engaged for welding. We also have three fuses located on top for uh, an easy servicing if needed. A heat fuse, a control fuse for the overall machine, as well as a fuse for the motor. These fuses can easily be identified and pulled out for examination and then easily replaced. With power to the unit, again, the watt low controller lights up. The controller can be increased or decreased as far as temperature can, is concerned by holding your finger on either the up or the down arrow. For the up arrow and a set point at 195, the red light begins to turn on and power is now being brought to the hot wedge. The power is quickly elevating the metal surface of the wedge, making ready for your welding. In addition to that, we have the speed control located here. Basically, the dot dial indicates either a zero or no movement at all to 100% of the motor's capability. At this point, when you're at 100%, you are roughly 33 feet per minute or 10 meters per minute. Therefore, at the 50 position, you are running the machine at roughly 15 to 18 feet per minute or about 5 meters per minute. Taking a continued look, again, the pinch roller engagement lever, whether being in the open position with the rollers apart for your entering and installing the material, or closing to engage the rollers ready for welding. In addition to the pinch roller is the wedge engagement lever, whether in the out or stowed position, or the wedge being brought in to begin the welding. When you do begin welding, make sure to move the wedge in at a deliberate manner. That way, when the wedge hits the surface of the rollers, the movement of the machine will take place. The Spec Extreme Hem Machine is a complete machine. In other words, installed on the machine is the guide system that's used for the various hem welds that can be performed with the machine. 
There are no other guide pieces that are needed for the machine. It comes complete. Other things you will receive with the machine also include a tool kit for adjustment of the guide system, a cleaning brush, as well as full written instruction of the machine. In talking specifically about the guide system for the SPEC Extremes HEM unit, this guide system, as mentioned, is complete. The various weld finish styles that can be made from this guide system are already on the machine. It will just be adjustments you will make to the machine guide system to form those welds. Should the guide need to, system need some maintenance other than you can do from the outside here, it can be removed from the unit. By first removing the wedge and taking the wedge to the service position, as well as removing the electrical plug-in for the hot wedge, by removing the screws that you see here, you will be able to take the entire unit out of the machine for the servicing aspect. This is the HEM guide system which will be explained to you a bit later during each weld demonstration and also you can find a full instruction on the use and maintenance of the guide system in the operational manual. For the hem cord style weld, the adjustment needed to the guide would include this interior purple part right here which is adjustable by the three red screws that are located in these positions. Loosen these screws so then you can move this inner guide part either towards or away from the edge of the guide here. It's best to bring the guide in towards the welding position and take a, a sample of the cord that you will be working with or rope you will be working with and insert here to make sure there's a nice easy flow of the cord through this opening. Keep in mind that you'll have not only the cord but also the material wrapped around it, so leave room for the cord to flow through easily. When this position has been set, go ahead and tighten the three red screws. For loading material into the guide system, Begin by placing the material here on the lower part of the guide tray and turning to make the hem and inserting the edge here on the top guide tray. At this point you can slide the material all the way through the machine to the welding area. In order to assist at the welding area, perhaps you can move the guide tray away by, use, by loosening the two black thumb screws and again pull the material through to the welding area. Then you can begin by slightly closing the guide and going back to the front to insert the cord. Insert the rope or cord in at the fold of the material go ahead and push this cord all the way through to the front end, or sorry, to the back end at the welding area. The cord will come out here and you are able to position it. Once in a proper position, material and cord, go ahead and push the guide system in to fully lock the positioning here in the the hem guide system, as well as position your material at this point to the pressure rollers, lower the pinch roller engagement lever so that you are preparing for the weld. After making sure the material is in the welding position, 
bring the machine into a rail or track system for convenience and make sure again to lower the drive roller into the lower pressure roller for an automatic propulsion of the machine when welding. At the front of the machine, the operator will want to continually have a fold of material entering into the guide system as shown here. The guide system is the length of the machine, so there's no concern about registration of the material through the guide. The operator will want to concentrate at this effort as well as have a look at the quality of the weld. So before you begin welding, make sure to take some sample thermoplastic product you're working with and come up with the proper temperature and speed of the machine that equals the quality bonding that you're looking for. Once those temperature settings have been made and the pressure should be put at 100% for this weld. Again, direct the material from this position, reach over, engage the wedge, and begin the welding process. During welding, you can make various adjustments, for example, to the speed for, again, the continued quality of the bonding of the weld. At the end, disengage the wedge to stop the welding, open the pinch rollers, and you have your finished hem cord style weld. For the flat hem style weld, you will make two changes to the guide system. First, you will take this lever arm piece here and you will install it on the guide system located at the two retaining rods that you see at this position. Insert sharply against the guide system. In addition to that, you will also remove the two pressure rollers on the machine using the Allen key to remove the set screw from the axle. Pull that smaller 1 inch 25 millimeter pressure roller and replace it with the larger 2 inch 51 millimeter roller that you receive with the unit. Apply those on and again screw tighten in this position. Do the same for the lower pressure roller as well. With the 2 inch 51 millimeter rollers installed and the lever arm. Next, loosen the three red screws that you see here so that you'll be able to slide the inner bar, easiest to slide from here, slide this all the way out so it comes in, con uh, comes in a parallel situation to the top mounted piece in this position. Once there, tighten the three red screws. For the loading of material for the flat hem style weld, make sure again the drive wheel is underneath so the machine is in a self-propelled mode. Move the guide piece away to give yourself room to insert the material from the front side. Begin placing by placing the material in between the lower and middle tray and bring forward so that you can turn a hem edge. Insert that top edge into the top tray portion and up against the guide mark. Now go ahead and feed the material all the way through the guide system to the welding area here. At the welding area, make sure the material is up against the top guide edge located inside the guide tray and position the material at the center of the pinch rollers. At this point, lower the pinch rollers to secure in position. Next, by loosening the black screws, push the guide tray in so it forces the material into a tight position that you've centered here. To begin welding, 
the operator should take care that the folded material enters into the guide system at the proper positioning, the edge up against the edge guide in the inner portion of the top tray. Concentrate in this area to keep that material entering in, whereas through the rest of the welding process, everything is held tight. During welding, not only concentrate here, but view the quality of your welding here and make any changes to the speed that you may for the quality of that weld. When ready to weld, engage the wedge lever arm to begin the welding process. Make any changes that might be needed as you are looking at the quality of your weld. Concentrate in front again to enter that amount of material. And here is your flat hem weld finish style. When finished, remove the wedge for your flat hem finish. For the pocket style weld finish, begin by opening up the guide tray and loosen the three red knobs here, here, and in this location here. Loosen the three knobs so that you can move the inner guide piece all the way to the farthest point to the outside. Once in that position, tighten again the red thumb screws. Next, with the small Allen key, locate the small set screw that is located here as well as here in the front of the machine. Unscrew that set screw just a small amount so that you'll be able to reach in to the purple guide piece located here and pull this inner guide piece in to approximately an eighth of an inch, four millimeters, from the outer guide that you've previously positioned to the edge of the fold of material. When in that position, tighten the set screw. Fold the material you're working with to the approximate size of the pocket that you wish to make. And now insert to the guide tray the lower portion here that you see and also in and around the turn and the upper portion and the edge of the material against the guide edge that you see here. After inserting, go ahead and flow the pocket shape all the way through the machine to the welding area. Again, pull the material all the way through to the welding area here. Make sure the material has a nice flow through the guide system. And at this point, you can position the pocket right at the top of the rollers and use the pinch roller engagement lever to position for welding. For welding, make sure again the drive wheel is underneath so that the machine is a self-propelled machine. And again, the operator wants to concentrate here in the front area so that he holds the pocket shape as the machine moves towards him. Everything else should be locked in position throughout the guide system. Again, make sure you have the proper temperature and speed for the thermoplastic you're welding. And when ready, engage the, lever, the wedge lever arm in and begin the welding process. Have a look at the quality of the weld that you're making. Make any adjustments that you need to to the quality of the bonding. When complete, Disengage the wedge and you've made the pocket weld finish style.